We are live. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the Nerds at Large reaction to the Pokemon Direct, January 9th, 2020. It, it's not 2019. Uh, oh, well. Too late to change it now. Uh, don't want to mess anything up. So, we got a Pokemon Direct in two minutes. It's 20 minutes long, making it the longest um, Pokemon Direct ever. So, that is very exciting. Um, especially since Sword and Shield are already out, so who knows how much will be on there. I'm sure there's going to be some post-release content and all that um that is a certainty um other things oh sorry sport. other things could be spin-off titles Detective Pikachu will probably make it here they've already announced that there's gonna be a Detective Pikachu game on Switch um, Daniel Ahmad, very reliable source. And Mystery Dungeon fans, watch out. I'd be very interested to see what they do with a Switch Mystery Dungeon game. I enjoyed that as a kid. Main hope is Pokin. Pokin would be cool. Um, other than that, not really much as far as expectations slash wants. So, yeah. Starting any minute now. Oh, here we go. Welcome to the Pokemon Direct. I'm Ishihara from the Pokemon Company. In today's broadcast, I'd like to touch on two topics. Let's get started with the first topic. Have a look at the following footage. Two topics, oh no. Ooh. We're gonna remix. Oh, Mr. Jesse. Forgetting my ear. Okay. Sweet. Is it a? It is a remake. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So this is a remake of the first one. Okay, they had Mega Evolution. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Okay. It's been about 15 years since Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team were released for the Nintendo DS and Game Boy Advance systems in Japan. But now they will gain a new life as a Nintendo Switch title. I forgot. I forgot they were different systems. Huh, that is soon. Okay, okay. Okay. I'll try it out. So it's <sighs> So looking like no poking. Shame. Hello everyone. I'm Masuda from Game Freak. Hello, and I'm Amori, also from Game Freak. We hope everyone has been finding something to enjoy in the latest entries to the Pokemon series, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield since their release last November. Our goal is always to deliver lively new adventures that delight Pokemon trainers around the world. We did our best to fill these titles with fun activities so that our players could have a fulfilling experience. And the Galar region is a vast one. We suspect you've had many new discoveries and fun encounters along your adventure. We've been thinking about how much we'd like it if everyone's Pokemon adventures could go on even longer. 
with more to dig into and new discoveries to explore. We've been working on plans for some time, in fact. This is why we at Game Freak are now developing the Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. Expansion Passes. Expansions for the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games that will be available for purchase from Nintendo eShop. Okay. Until now, we've sometimes released new titles set in the same region as previous games. Still have to buy a new game! <laughs> or Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon. Pokemon's getting into the... <laughs> Go to the future! You'll be able to set out on new adventures using the save data you're already playing with. Okay. We're in the thick of development now, but we've prepared some footage for you so you'll be able to at least get a feeling for what new experiences await you. Please have a look. Miss what little stuff was there. Let's see. <laughs> We're getting a uh, ooh, Galarian Slowpoke. Okay. Are they doing um, the gym leaders for all the different types? Okay, we knew those were gonna be in there. Oh, okay. Gigantamax version of those? We'll get Gigantamax version of the starters? Yeah! <laughs> what is all this? The Isle of Arbor. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> we're getting a new Slowpoke evolution. They're adding in a bunch of the Pokemon that weren't in there. Nice, nice. What is all that? Is that a Galarian Pidgeot? We went back. Or maybe that was a Galarian Articuno. Oh well. Ever there's a lot to dissect here, so I'm not against seeing stuff again.
I wasn't even thinking with all those new Pokemon they were showing there. Those are... Yeah, those are Galarian of the Legendary Birds. The Crown Tundra. Okay. Part one, part two, okay. I'm like a minute behind, so. The fuck? It's obviously a Smash trailer. So not actual gameplay. The fuck? <laughs> The box legendaries, they're fighter forms? Triforce! What did you think of this first look? The Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and the Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass will be composed of the Isle of Armor. June? Okay. June 2020 and the Crown Tundra. Veil and Fall. Okay. Fall I will play these. If you buy the Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass, you'll be able to enjoy both as they're released. Each part offers a different adventure, where you'll be able to visit unseen areas of the Galar region and meet new people and Pokemon that live there. So... There are two versions of the Expansion Pass, one for Pokemon Sword and oh. one for Pokemon Shield. Different Pokemon will appear in the different versions, and you'll also run into okay. different people and places. Okay. We're hoping Makes sense. We can continue with the classic Pokemon experience of trading with one another and working together. Now, without further ado, let's have the director himself present more information on the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Mr. Tani? Got about 10 ish minutes. I'm Tani from Game Freak. I'm working as the director for the Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. The Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra are in development as we speak. So today, we'd like to show off some designs and concept art to help introduce you to these new areas. I want Pokemon. <laughs> Your adventures in Galar are getting even bigger. First, let us introduce the Isle of Armor, which focuses on the theme of growth. Take a look. The next destination in your adventure is a giant island off the shores of the Gala region known as the Isle of Armor. This island is full of beautiful nature. You'll find beaches, bogs, forests, caves, and dunes. And of course, you'll find Pokemon that you couldn't previously find in Galar dwelling there too. Nice, yes. Add more of the Pokemon missing from the decks. And you'll take up an apprenticeship under the Pokemon trainer who runs it. Yeah. This is Mustard, who will become your mentor. He's also the <laughs> champion Leon, who you probably know quite well. In fact, Mustard has occupied the seat of champion himself in the past. You'll also encounter new rivals among your fellow apprentices. When playing with the Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass, you'll be training with Clara, who is a poison type user. Okay. When playing with the Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass, you will be training with Avery, who is a psychic type user. Oh, uh, yeah. They're both training hard so they can someday have a gym and stadium to call their own. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Next, we'd like to introduce the legendary Pokemon that will be central to the story. Cub Fu. It's a fighting type Pokemon that strives to become stronger with single minded dedication. Kafu, baby! Through your training, Mustard will entrust you with this Pokemon. Once you complete your training together with Cub Fu, it will be able to evolve into Urshifu. Urshifu is a Pokemon with two distinct styles. Okay. There is Single Strike style, a fighting and dark type style that delivers a single strike at blinding speed. So that's going to be a sword one, I'm going to assume. There is also rapid strike style. A fighting and water type style that focuses on okay. a torrent of rapid strikes. Oh, that's sword and shield because I want the fighting What's more, water. It's been revealed that Urshifu has a Gigantamax form. Yes. 
Each style will have a different appearance, as well as a different G-Max move. You'll be able to evolve your Kung Fu into an Urshifu in one of these two styles, Single Strike Style or Rapid Strike Style, during your adventure. Urshifu is a powerful Pokémon with a brand new ability, and it also has a new move for each of its two styles. Once you've completed your training, bring it with you for some online battles or official competitions. Okay. Not bad. We also want to talk about Rillaboom, Cinderace, and Intellia. They're all in Smash. First three Pokemon you team up with in the Galar region. Hell yeah. During your adventure in the Isle of Armor, these special partners in your teams will be able to Gigantamax. You can look forward to seeing their new forms and new G-Max moves. Okay, so they'll just... And as you can see here, we've got even more in the works to make sure your journey is as smooth and fun as possible. There are new hey, we just about Marnie. And you'll even be able to obtain new looks for your bike. Okay. We hope you'll look forward to the new experiences coming in the Isle of Armor. Okay, so uh, the still Gen One pending with the starter, like Gigantamax, but at least not just Charizard. The second area, which has a theme of exploration. I'm going to show you the information we have at the moment. This expansion is set in the snow-swept realm of the Crown Tundra. Take a look for yourself at the beautiful scenery of this shining, silvery landscape. As it turns out, the Isle of Armor isn't the only uncharted area waiting for you all in the Gala region. In this frigid area, with its towering winter mountains, people live in small communities that support and rely on each other. Much like on the Isle of Armor, you'll be able to find Pokémon that didn't appear in the Gala region before. Yeah. With this area's theme of exploration, there will be plenty for you to uncover. You might find a strange temple where you least expect it, or maybe spy a mysterious giant tree growing in a place it doesn't seem to belong. There's gonna be any new Pokemon. A certain person. One of those things. Probably not. Is the leader of their exploration team in the Crown Tundra. You can gear up for adventure, and then head out to explore blizzard-swept fields and even deep inside Pokemon dens, which you could only previously get a glimpse of during max raid battles. Next, we'd like to introduce Calyrex, the legendary Pokémon you'll discover during your adventure. Legends say this Pokémon once ruled over a part of Galar that included the Crown Tundra. Psychic and Grass. Hmm. By graceful, regal movements. Get ready to experience a never-before-told story about the mysteries of Calyrex. The Crown Tundra will have a new form of co-op play as well. This will allow you and friends to enter and explore Pokemon dens that exist underground in the Crown Tundra. Deep inside the dens, you may see legendary Pokemon from past games Dynamaxing before your eyes. You'll be able to meet and make allies of all kinds of legendary Pokemon during your adventures in the Crown Tundra. Including ones you'll be able to catch through this co-op play. Okay. It also appears that some brand new legendary Pokemon are also waiting to be found somewhere in this land. Are these just straight up brand new? Combined with the Isle of Armor, dozens of new clothing items will be added. <laughs> Plus, there will be new battles waiting for you to challenge once you complete your entire game, including the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. We can't go into the details of everything, but we're working on planning and developing new ways to enjoy Pokemon even as we speak. The Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra areas themselves are actually two key examples of the things we're working on. Both areas are in fact seamless maps, much like the wild area you can already experience in the Galaxy. Okay. Area, where players are able to move around freely and control the so, Okay. You'll be able to connect with other trainers and play with them too. There will be Pokemon dens as well. More interesting wild areas, hopefully. Okay. That haven't previously appeared in the Gala region. More to see and do on the Isle of Armor and in the Crown Tundra than there was even in the Wild Area. We'll bring you more information about them in future news reports, so please stay tuned. What did you think? We at Game Freak are all working hard to bring you new content. No time for one more thing, I think. Fun in the Galar region. We hope you're as excited as we are for what's to come. Thank you, Mr. Connie. On the Isle of Armor and in the Crown Tundra, 
you'll see some familiar Pokémon that didn't appear in the Galar region before. There will be more than 200 Pokémon species that appear in these areas, and you can add to your team, including the legendary Pokémon mentioned before. Nice. That's Additionally, that most of them? distributing free updates for Pokémon Sword and Pokémon Shield that will coincide with the releases of the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. These updates will allow people who don't have the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield expansion pass to obtain the Pokemon that are okay. on the Isle of Armor and in the Crown Tundra. That's nice. At least they're not like, you're locked out of these Pokemon if you don't have the pass. Players will also be able to bring over Pokemon to their game from the cloud service Pokemon. Ah, that's probably what they're. As long as the Pokemon appear in the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield expansion packs. Pokemon Home should be... is planned to launch in February 2020. Okay. We intend to release even more details before then, so please wait just a little bit longer. Okay. Finally, we have some more news for our Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield players. Starting today, it seems like you're more likely to run into Gigantamax Colossal, Gigantamax Lapras, and Gigantamax Flapple or Gigantamax Appleton in max raid battles in the wild area. Face these powerful Pokemon with your friends. There will also be a software update going live available later today. Once you've received the update, head to Wedgehurst Station. In Pokemon Sword, you'll encounter Clara, while in Pokemon Shield, you'll run into Avery. You'll also encounter a Galarian Slowpoke that's wandered in from the Isle of Armor. You can try to catch it and add it to your team. Galarian Slowpoke can evolve into Galarian Slowbro if you use an item that can be found on the Isle of Armor. <sighs> Or into Galarian Slowking if you use an item oh. to the Crown Tundra. Okay. Don't forget to check it out. What did you think? Today, we've finally been able to show you some of what we at Game Freak are hoping to achieve going forward. We hope we've been Slowpoke able to be a for the continuing adventures waiting for you in the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Each part offers a different adventure. We'll do our best to fill it to the brim with adventures like you've never experienced before. Whether you're just starting with Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, or you've done everything there is to do, we'll do our best to develop something that everyone can enjoy. Stay tuned for more updates in the future. My thanks to everyone from Game Freak. Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Yeah, let's give me one more thing. Give me Pokemon, dang it. The Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra will be available for pre hey, 30 bucks. E later today. That's surprising. You'll also be able to act That was a sudden stop. Let's try to see what else was there was. Tundra will be available for pre-purchase on Nintendo eShop later today. You'll also be able to act. Okay, so it just stopped. It wasn't. Um. Wonder what the rest of that little bit is. I doubt there's anything like poking related or anything, unfortunately. Um. Actually, let's see. Let me go back. There was a part I missed.
notice anything big. Um. Naturally, people in the chat are not happy. One from Game Freak. The Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon will be available for pre-purchase on Nintendo eShop later today. You'll also be able to act. Okay. Um. So even on the official version, the ending is cut off. Kind of funny. Um. But I got a feeling it's not much more than hey. In the menu, you can go ahead and buy, you know, here's a link to buy the expansion passes. So, okay. So that is everything. A little different than I expected. Um, started out the mystery dungeon. Not completely really surprised that, you know, not, I mean, not surprising at all that they added a Pokemon spinoff here and it being a remake of the first mystery dungeon. Very interesting. Art style looks pretty neat. Um, coming up March is crazy. And doesn't make complete sense just from a Nintendo game standpoint, you know, even though a lot of people are like, oh, it's coming out the same week as Final Fantasy and that's what will hurt it. Thing is that will hurt this thing is that this game is coming out a couple weeks before Animal Crossing. So see how that goes. Um, as far as the, no, let me take this off. Let's see. Do do. Boop. Okay. So as far as the, I was gonna call it expansion pass. I already forgot what they were. Each annual pass card were called. I know crown and armor in them, but yeah. So everyone was correctly guessing that there was not gonna be a mainline Pokemon game released this year. That's because they're foregoing the third version slash sequel for these games um, and just doing an expansion pass which get on um, Game Freak to join us in 2020 you know but as far as what's in the in the past what's very interesting so far just based on the look it looks like it's more substantial than mm, I would say just based on what they show most things that are in the third version of the other generations, we'll say this more story, obviously more story stuff. They're brand new locations. So that is very interesting. Um, gets me more excited. And the fact they're going to be, um, seems to, I need to see the numbers, but it looks like they might be adding most of the, Pokemon, they say 200 Pokemon. I think that might be most of the Pokemon that did not make the cut for the um, Sword and Shield. So it looks like we're getting most of the National Legs back, which will make some people very happy. Um, and I'm, I'm happy for that too. More Pokemon, the better. Especially since, you know, just old Pokemon. And it's very exciting. It looks like they're going with the way they're structuring the stories is kind of different for um, Pokemon as far as the expansion stuff it's like you're still kind of doing training stuff but yeah go for the Dejo theme for the armor aisle, aisle of armors or whatever is really cool when you get a new Pokemon buddy just given to you and that's really neat I'm very curious if the it's two evolutions are based on the version Maybe not considering they all went ahead since they didn't say so and they're very clear about other things that were version exclusive. Um, yeah, and I really, I really like the way it looks like it. The whole areas for both these places are just wild areas with more interesting stuff going on. Maybe a more cohesive area um, with 
more landmarks to make it stand out and not just big field. There's a lake here. There's some rocks here. Um, that's very exciting. New Pokemon? Very cool. I mean, it's mainly the Galarian forms, of course. We're going to get Galarian Slowpoke. This to be a part fire at the very least. All they did is add a little yellow to its head, so I don't know if it's if it's water fire. That'd be neat. Um, and makes sense that they do Slowbro Slowking as the version exclusives. Honestly, this is a lot more I more than I thought they do for Sword and Shield. I honestly expected a lot of home and well, mainly home stuff to go in the details of that. They're doing that later, but and they have to because it's coming out next month apparently. So, yeah, yeah. Pokemon expansion thing looks cool. I'm sure to get it. Um. Oh, dang. I was about to say it might be cool if we, like, if Darby wanted to, we can continue on Nuzlocke with that. That would involve paying another thirty bucks. So that probably ain't happening. Shame. Um. So yeah. Overall, I think this is a very good Pokemon Direct. A lot of stuff going on. Definitely, despite the fact you know these expansions aren't coming out for a little while, June for the first one and fall for the next one, they packed in more information and details than I think they have for a Pokemon game in a long while, as far as one Direct goes. So I think they did a good job with their time. Obviously, it focused a lot on the expansion, so... Um, yeah, they did it well with them. I, based on just trying to remember all that happened, I, it might help with some of the do help with some of the criticisms that people had with it. Not everyone, of course. Um, as far as the, the Pokemon missing and no post game content, I think you could make the argument that this stuff should be in the base game, and I would tend to potentially agree. At least maybe the first area. But, um, yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not used to being alone, so I'm just trying to think of things. Like there, are, there's a, there was a good bit in there. Um, yeah, the Sword and Shield stuff's big. It's interesting they're not doing a second version. I th definitely, I'm definitely glad they're doing that. So, like, I would not get a second. I would not pay sixty bucks for the third version to get the stuff but I will probably definitely pay the um, 30 bucks to get this expansion pass because it does look meaty I did enjoy Sword and Shield more than a good many people did so you know that is very exciting I'm very interested to see more information see what um, you have to say about it people kind of dissecting on what the you know spot and see and spot what hidden stuff were in all those um, drawings and stuff they had up. So, yeah. yeah. I think it was a very solid direct. I think it kind of justified it not being in a regular direct as far as giving details because I think with the situation Pokemon is in as far as the fan base goes, well, I do think more people enjoyed it, enjoy Sword and Shield than not. I do think the people who have problems with it are large enough to that they need to explain exactly, hey, this is all that's in it. Um, and, you know, hopefully it kind of fixes some people, you know, fixes stuff people are criti rightfully criticizing. Hmm. And yeah, hopefully we get a regular direct next week for all the other stuff. And we don't have to worry about po any Pokemon stuff. Actually, that's where Pokemon Home will be. That's where Pokin will be. Dang it. Now I really want to buy Pokin DX. Why do you do this, Game Freak? Okay. So, that'll be the end of this. We, I don't know how much more talking we'll, discussion we'll do for this. Might probably we'll discuss it in the regular podcast. Probably come up whenever we do uh, the next Nuzlocke stream, which, you know, people don't know. Um, on this Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash nerds at large gaming, me and my co-host Darby Hallman, we do a Nuzlocke run um, a Pokemon Shield. And we are six badges in, about to get to our seventh, and the stream we did last night. 
very, very eventful. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll say. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Check out our the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. Check out our Nuzlocke. Check out our um, D&D podcast, Nerds and Dragons. Spoiler, Nerds at Large spoiler cast. We do spoiler cast for a bunch of things. We recently did The Witcher. Um, hopefully, we'll have a couple other ones up soon. And, yeah. Good saw Bogman Director. I'm curious to see what everyone's thinking about and see what that ending thing was. Probably not significant, but whatever. Okay. That is all. Bye.